From the other side of the footlights, here is WHRO FM critic M.D. Rich. French pianist Prisca Benoit rocked the house at Chrysler Hall November 8th in her debut with the Virginia Symphony. An acclaimed international performer, Benoit demonstrated power, eloquent lyricism, and sensitive dynamics in Beethoven's Concerto No. 1 in C Major, Op. 51. The first movement, Allegro con Brio, was cheerful and bright with rippling figures played with superb clarity, moving to softer, more thoughtful passages in which Benoit's light touch spooled out ribbons of notes and lightning trills. The Largo was tenderly melodic and thoughtful with lovely woodwinds, especially Michael Byerly's clarinet, which was a standout. One scarcely wanted to breathe for fear of missing even a moment. Conductor Joanne Folletta brought out every orchestral nuance, bold or subtle, with grace and ease. Third movement, Rondo Allegro, returned to bright, jaunty images with Beethoven vigor and sweeping rhythms that at one point had almost a Latin feel. Benoit's dancing bass line, fluid cross-hand technique, and masterful repeated figures, each iteration distinct, were the subject of many wow discussions among appreciative pianists and organists during the intermission. Not only an extraordinary performer and teacher, Benoit is the artist-in-residence for Sintera's Music and Medicine Center. She has collaborated for the last six years with the center's founder, Dr. Kamal Chamali, a neurologist and classically trained pianist, who had previously founded the famed Cleveland Clinic's Arts and Medicine Institute. Dr. Chamali noted in his introduction to the concert that since the dawn of humanity, music has been considered good for health, and now we have the tools to prove it. Folletta, Virginia Symphony's music director, is a longtime Mahler fan. Under her baton, the symphony has performed all nine of the composer's Finnish symphonies, including the eighth, the Symphony of a Thousand, in a memorable performance at the 2012 Virginia Arts Festival. She said returning to his first symphony puts everything in perspective. In his Symphony No. 1 in D major, Mahler borrowed from his own song cycle, Songs of a Wayfarer. Let me digress here a moment. Composers often borrow from their own material. Borrowing from another composer is frowned on as plagiarism, but if the other composer is dead and can't sue, you may be able to pass it off as homage. The work is in public domain, no longer under copyright. It's fair game. Back to Mahler. The first symphony is referred to as the Titan, a reference to a novel by John Paul, but Mahler removed the reference after the third performance. The first movement began slowly with a sense of tense alertness, with cellos and basses sustaining the tension. An off-stage trumpet fanfare gave way to clarinet cuckoo calls, flitting woodwinds, and rhythmic changes leading to a huge ending. In the second movement, Mark moving strongly, Basses and cellos provided the ground for an energetic triple rhythm landler dance. The deep, rich sound of the lower strings was notable, as was the later crisp percussion. In the third movement, solemn and measured without dragging, Christopher White's solo bass introduced a melodic theme that was a minor setting of Frere Jacques as an eerie, slow march. The canon was picked up by one section after another before an oboe counter melody, then a weirdly cheerful klezmer melody before the slow conclusion. The final movement began with the organized frenzy of a storm, with the strings buzzing like angry bees, then a melodic sweeping section that felt like a film score, then more increasing frenzy. In the quiet after the storm are heard the clarinet's cuckoo theme and the flute's bird song before the final brilliant, utterly satisfying climax. Kudos to Folletta and the entire orchestra. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge.